Hello and welcome. Today's topic is REST, and the smell is not using RESTful routes. The fix for that? Just follow REST. This is one of those Rails conventions that is totally worth adopting. It will cause good things to happen in your application when you get rid of the smell by following the fix. By the way, if you don't know REST, if that word is not familiar to you, this screencast will probably be a bit over your head, and so you should check out this guide right here. But let's take a look at a non-RESTful route. In fact, let's take a look at two of them. This application has them right here, and they both are related to creating or removing admin privileges for a user. The dead giveaway for the non-RESTful nature of this is this put helper right here. Usually you want to see resource or resources. In this case, the put helper says we are adding a non-RESTful route here. Let's actually walk through refactoring this. But first, I want to point out something that will help you identify this smell in the future if the put is not clear enough. A good RESTful route looks like this. So for instance, users show. That is a solid RESTful route. Our routes, you'll notice, our non-RESTful routes above look like this. So in our example, we have users make admin. The thing to notice right here is this last noun. When you have a non-RESTful route and you have this verb noun structure, that second noun probably wants to be a first class noun in your system. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a set of admin routes and make an admin a first class thing in this Rails app. And we'll see some solid improvements because of that. Now I'm going to start by opening up my spec. It looks like this. It covers two branches, promoting to admin and demoting from admin. And I'm going to run that and just make sure we're green, which we are. And I'll be running the spec continually as I'm making changes to make sure that we are still working or to show us interesting errors that will tell us what to do next. Now, when I'm making changes, I like to work from the outside in most often. So let's pop open the view. Great. So here is our user show view. And this line right here is where I'm going to start. Let's start with changing the promote to admin path to be restful as opposed to non-restful. So the way to do that is by changing this around to just user admin path. And now instead of method put, we're not updating a user uh, from Rails' perspective. Instead, we're gonna just going to post to this create action. And that's the default of button two. So we don't need method put anymore. So let's run this and see what happens. Now we've gotten a bunch of text because we blew up, but specifically we called an undefined method user admin path, which makes sense because I referenced a thing that I wish I had. I don't have it quite yet. So let's get it. Let's pop back to routes and let's add that path. Notice here I'm doing the only create option to the resource. I like to only create the exact routes that I need at the time. And that way I don't have more entry points to my application than I actually truly need and will use. Also, I'll add to this list later, but I always start with the only. Excellent. Now we're getting a new interesting error, which is that we are missing the admins controller, which is good. We have a route and the route is saying, hey, there should be an admins controller, but we don't have that yet. So let's make one. Now I'm going to rerun the spec and I expect to see a new error. Excellent. We have that new error. Action create could not be found for admins controller. That's what I was hoping. Cool. Now we're getting this somewhat incomprehensible capybara error, but the root of this is that, hey, I went to that action and the stuff I got back, I could not find the text user is an admin. So let's go ahead and fix that error now too. Here we're getting that we cannot redirect to nil, which is fine because user is nil still. Let's find our user. This failure is saying that we expected to find the user as an admin text, but the user is still not an admin. That error could be better. A future screencast is gonna cover making better test errors. But the point is what we need to do is update the user. Great, and we are green again. Now let's hop back into our routes. And we can now remove this make admin route. And if I rerun my tests, we still pass. Let's do this again for the second action as well. I'm going to start from the view once again.
Here we need method delete now because as opposed to creating the admin, we are deleting it. Here's our error that we're messing around. Let's add that related route. Excellent. And now we are going to the admins controller, but we're just missing the destroy action. So let's hop over to the admins controller. And we are getting that same funky error. I'm going to copy down that action above and change true to false. Great. So let's hop back to the routes for a second. I can remove this route that is still there. And if I rerun my spec, we're still green. So let's take a second and look at the diff and see what we've done. So here we have a new admins controller. Both actions are very simple. We have referenced some new paths here, changed the method that we got at them at, and removed our non-RESTful routes in favor of RESTful routes. This is a nice improvement. And by the way, we can hop over into the user's controller now and get rid of those old actions. Boom, gone. Now look how beautiful and small and simple the user's controller is. And granted, we did put them over here, but each of these controllers is small and dealing with just one concept. Here admins, here users. So we promoted the idea of making a user an admin into a top level noun, into a top level controller. One other nice thing worth noticing in our diff is that before we came up with our own verbs, make and remove, and now we're just using the restful verbs, create and destroy. This is actually kind of great. It's nice to not have to come up with a unique set of verbs for every object in your system. Here we're leaning on the convention that REST gives us, which is great. It makes our mental requirements a little lower. And it also makes a very explicit thing that used to be implicit. So before you could sort of implicitly notice, hey, those things both seem to reference an admin flag. And now there very explicitly is a resource of an admin that can have well-defined RESTful verbs act upon it. This is one of those small wins that helps a lot on a team. Uh, when you set this as a convention, this helps reduce the amount of decisions you have to make and also makes your code a little bit more predictable and easy to parse for new people. Now let's look at an example that is a little bit more subtle where the implicit is even more implicit. Let's hop over to our routes. So it looks like we've actually succeeded in removing all of the non-RESTful actions from our application. However, there's actually a RESTful route waiting to be born hidden inside our orders controller. So let's go take a look. So this controller looks fairly innocent, but it actually is sheltering some shenanigans. And the shenanigans start right here. So in this application, it's possible to refund orders, which updates a flag on order. And in this case, someone did something that is totally understandable, which is they put the functionality for refunding orders in an action that already existed, in this case, the update action. Now, this is almost always going to be the easiest thing to do. When you're faced with a requirement of, hey, uh, make this new thing happen. If there's already an existing action or some existing code, it's almost always easiest to just jam that new functionality in there. And in this case, that's sort of what happened here, which is we already had this order update action happening. And in this case, we say, oh, by the way, if you happen to have just refunded that order, we need to send a notification. So do that here. And someone just went ahead and slid this into the update action. Now, one unfortunate downside of this shenanigans is that we need this funky method here, which is we need to pay attention to whether or not the order was just refunded. And so we have to rely on these somewhat wonky active record methods by checking if the refunded value just changed. And if it did just change, did it change from false to true? And if so, only then send the refund notification. This is a direct result of pushing this functionality into this existing method. So let's go ahead and promote this idea to a first class RESTful route in our system. We're not just going to use the orders update method anymore. We're going to promote refund into a first class citizen, which is going to cause some nice things to happen. So once again, let's start by opening up a spec. Here is the user refunding an order spec. Let's run this real quick and make sure we're green. We are. Now there are three expectations here. First is that we want to see the order was refunded on the page. Uh, the second is that we should get a confirmation email about the refund. And the third is that the actual flag should be set to true. Now, I would actually argue that these 
two expectations shouldn't live in this file. These are probably not happiest here. They can find a better home. And as part of this refactoring, we're gonna find them a better home. But let's go ahead and run this one more time. We are green. Now, just like last time, let's start in the view. So here we are. This is the button for refunding an order. You can see that we set the refunded flag to true and do a put, which is gonna hit that orders update method. So let's again, pretend that we have code already for refunding. So let's pretend we have an order refund path. And if we do, we don't need to pass this flag in. And also we can make this a create once again, because we're creating a refund as opposed to updating an order. This test fails in a predictable way, which is that order refund path does not exist. Let's hop over to the routes. Again, I'm doing this only create business. Excellent, we're getting our error saying that we are missing a refunds controller. Cool, we have a new error now that we're missing the create action. And we're getting that funky capybara error again that basically says, hey, I ran your action and it didn't work. I expected the page to have text, this order was refunded. So let's make it work. So here we are being told that we actually did not send the confirmation email. So we are seeing the text on the page that the refund happened, but the email didn't go out. That's fine. Let's actually send it. Excellent. And we're back to green. So now that we're passing, we can go do something awesome, which is delete more code. We can get rid of all this nonsense right here, which means we can get rid of this method right here. And this controller just got a heck of a lot better. This is the basic shape I like my controller actions to have, a real simple if else, hopefully with one line in each branch. This is when I feel pretty good about where a controller is. But let's hop back to refunds controller for a second. There's something awesome we can do to take this code to the next level. This is fine. You might commit this or make a PR for this and call it a day, and this would be a nice improvement. Again, our routes have gotten better. In this case, our refund situation, our ability to refund was super, super implicit. It was hidden inside the update action of the orders. And now it's very obvious that you can create a refund, right? Super, super clear. So we've already had a win, but we can make this even better, which is to realize, hey, this is not one line of thing happening in my action. It'd be great to get it down to one line. Well, a great way to do that is to put this functionality in a service object. So we have this idea of a refunds controller, but why don't we have an idea of a refund as an object in our system? We don't need to, but in this case, it'd be nice to have it. So let's pretend we do already. And let's say it works like this. It takes an order and we call run on it. There's the error we would expect, which is that refund is not defined yet. Now I'm going to run my test again, and I'm gonna expect a slightly weird error. And there it is, which is that the wrong number of arguments happened. It was given one and expected zero in initialize. And this is something that you'll get used to seeing in Ruby, where you call, uh, in this case, we called the new method with an argument, and we haven't defined an initialize method that takes an argument yet. So we're seeing this error. So let's fix that. Rerun our spec. Great, now we have undefined method run. And now I'll expect this to have a different failure. And here we are. We couldn't find the text that the order was refunded in order detail, which means, hey, I called your new service object, but nothing actually happened, you jerk. Now I could keep writing this class using only that high level feature spec I have to TDD this, but I'd actually like to drop down now to a model spec. This is a nice opportunity to write more focused targeted specs for this new object in my system. So let's do that. So we know we want our refund to do two things.
we want to send an email and update a column. And let's go grab those expectations from the feature spec so that we know we have them correct. I'm going to start by copying this method over because we're going to want it. And then I'm going to grab this email related expectation. Now, once again, I'm going to work bottom to top. Undefined method order. Cool. We're still getting our error, but we have a complete spec now. And the error is happening because this doesn't actually do anything. It's empty. So let's add something. Awesome. And we're green. So now we can delete that spec from our feature spec and this method. And let's move on to the other assertion. Cool. We're failing again in the right way. Great, we're green again. Now we can go back and delete the other spec. Green, happy, good. So let's take a look at what we have now. We have this nice focused model spec for refund. We have a high level feature test that only looks at the UI now. It doesn't dig into the database and it doesn't worry about email sending. And we have this beautiful tiny non-active record model. This is great. Having a Rails application with lots of plain old Ruby objects will make your life a little bit better. This refund object in the future is going to be a wonderful magnet for refund related behavior. People, when they want to see how refunds work, only have one place to look. And in the future, when they need to add new functionality to it, we'll know right where to do it. This is like how before, when I referenced the order update action, it was just easiest to jam that refund related logic into the update action because it already existed. Well, now a good new home exists where you can put functionality related to refunds and that will make life easier. It's like a convention that's extremely easy for everyone to follow and know where to put stuff. Finally, something worth noticing, our refunds controller maps to a refund object that is not active record. You don't need to have a one-to-one -one mapping of controllers to active record objects. It's totally okay to have them point at plain old Ruby objects that you made yourself. So quick recap, follow rest. Uh, if you have non-restful routes, it's worth refactoring them. These are great small pull requests to make on applications that have gotten a little bit hairy. You will find that it will make development a little bit easier. Following the conventions will be easy. And then when you have new controllers that are small and focused, they'll be easier to read. And often you'll notice a nice opportunity to extract service objects to encapsulate behavior related to those controllers. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.